So great to have Ushin McCurns from Pundit Arena, football journalist, join us on the show to talk about Stephen Kenny's first squad. Ushin, thanks for joining us. Lads, thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Ushin. So we're just going to run through the squad quickly here. The three goalkeepers are Darren Randolph, Mark Travers, Kieran O'Hara. Six defenders, Seamus Coleman, Matt Darty, and Stephen, Shane Duffy, John Egan, Dar Lenhin. Midfielders are James McCarthy, Harry Arthur, Hendrick, Alan Brown, Connor Hurhan, Jason Malumby making his first call up into the squad, Robbie Brady, Callum Robinson, Callum O'Dowda, James McLean, Aaron Connolly, Anamita, Troy Parr, Shane Long, David McGoldrick. Ushin, there's a lot of strikers in there, first of all. There's a lot of strikers. There's not many defenders either, which is a bit of a surprise. But no, I'm happy to see that it appears that Stephen's going to go heavy um, in terms of attack. The, the defenders did surprise me, to be fair. I thought that he'd have more than six. I thought he'd have a bit more cover um, around there. Unless he thinks some of the midfield players maybe can do the jobs there, sliding a fullback or something like that if he's stuck. Um, but yeah, a lot of attacking options. And no, it's good to see. It's good to see a lot of guys. It's good to see like Adam Ida, Troy Parr, a lot of younger guys in there. So uh, for me, yeah, I think it took me a little bit of time to kind of, when I initially saw the squad, I think I was kind of like, okay. And then I kind of, the more I kind of looked at it, the more I kind of thought about it. I think it, it is a strong squad. I think he's got a nice mix of experience and a nice mix of youth. And I'm really interested to see what he does with it. I think his style of play and formation, stuff like that, I think that's going to be super interesting to see how he goes with that, who he plays, where, stuff like that. I think it's going to be super interesting. Yeah, exactly. And even just the six defenders, a lot of people were talking in the press even just about playing five at the back because it's six yeah. players. There's no way he's going to play five at the back anyway. You know about his formation, but with only six defenders, there's no way he can, he can probably do that. Yeah, he's probably cut that out. Now, I think he has said that before a couple of times that it's not the way he wants to go for this Ireland team. Whether it is the right way to go, don't really know. Again, like he, he's kind of brought the Doherty Coleman debate again on himself a little bit because. If he does go for that, we would imagine it'll be a 4 3 3. I can't see where Doherty slots in there if it's not a right back because Coleman's his captain, so I imagine Coleman's going to start. And I can't see Doherty being pushed into the, that front three, especially given the fact that he has, what, nine strikers in the squad. So I don't know, is this going to be a case of Doherty being left out again? It's going to, that's, it's just going to be interesting to see how he, how he goes with that. Unless he, I, part of me kind of thought, maybe, is he looking at Col- like, I think Coleman will start, but is he looking at Coleman as an option as well at centre half? That's why he didn't put another centre half in or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but I do think that the Doherty common debate is going to be something that's going to be, again, like it was under McCarthy, it's going to be rife when the, the internationals come. And a, a few interesting additions, the likes of Jason Malumbi, Adam Eda, and then yeah. Troy Pard and Conley uh, keep their place in the squad. What There's a few little omissions there. One example, Glenn Whelan, 92 caps, probably he's had his time for Ireland, but still, first squad in a while, he's missed out on. Mm. Yeah, I, I, to be fair, I wasn't too surprised to see Whelan out. I think he's been a fantastic servant in Ireland. You can't, you can't knock him at all, I think. But I just think it is time maybe for him to move on a little bit. I'm not sure now how Stephen had a chat with him or what the story is there. And I think Whelan did mention that when he was put into retirement by Martin O'Neill, that he, he would never technically retire. He'd always kind of be available for a call-up now. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a natural progression in terms of you've got like Malumbi coming through. Even with the 21s, you have players who can play that role coming through. You've got James McCarthy coming back as well, which is crucial. Would Whelan be in the squad if McCarthy wasn't? Maybe he would be. But yeah, Whelan, I think, is it's an omission that is an understandable one, I think you could probably say. And it's, if you actually look at that squad and you even think about the lads who've missed out, the likes of Oba Fenny, Jack Byrne, Josh Cullen, Dar O'Shea, if you look at that midfield, it's actually quite strong. You've got a lot of lads next year who'll be playing Premier League football. Harry yeah. Artis come back into the squad. He had that little Roy for Roy Keane towards the end uh, of the Martin O'Neill era. He's someone that has really impressed Stephen Kenny and Stephen Kenny has brought him up in press conferences expressing how good a footballer he is and he, he's kind of footballer that high energy, he suits Stephen Kenny's style of football. Yeah, that right, Sean. He has brought him up a lot of times, and that surprised me a little bit because, like, I do think Ireland's a good player, and he had he actually has had a quite quite a good season on loan at Fulham. I'm interested to see what he does next season. Is he going to stay at Bournemouth because another gone down? Is he going to get another loan move? But yeah, Kenny does seem to be a real fan of his. That midfield, it is strong. I think it's a, it's a it's a position that we really need to work on because, like, if you look at the core there, I mean, like the likes of Jeff Hendrick, Connor Horan, even James McCarthy coming in, like they're good. They're good play, Premier League players, solid Premier League players. But it just seems as though they couldn't. I don't know if McCarthy couldn't quite get a tune out with them or. It just felt like they weren't kind of stepping up necessarily at the international level. I think Hendrick, especially, I know we're going to talk about him a little bit later, but Hendrick and someone like Hora, and I think those are two players who can really, if Kenny gets behind them and if they kind of buy into what Kenny's selling to them, I think they can really, really step up and be key players with Ireland. But like, as you said, the competition is there. Malumbi, I'm interested to see what happens with him in terms of, because I know Kenny's a huge fan of his. I know he's obviously some faith in him by putting him in the squad, but is he going to start him from the start? It's in the first game against uh, Bulgaria. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. 
he's, he's probably looking side down, but he's probably looking at Malumbi, what Malumbi did for the 21s, and he's probably thinking Harry Arda's probably got that little bit more experience if he yeah. want to win these first couple of games. But Malumbi's definitely going to be probably into the Harry Arda role in you know in in later games under Kenny. But yeah, yeah. You, sorry, go on. Yeah, just on the formation th- thing. Um, I heard Stephen Kenny interview last year at Second Captains Live, and he was um, he was very adamant that four three three or four two three one whenever when you put yeah. the formation, that was the end of it. Um, which I was delighted with because I most people's favorite formation, but a couple of my mates had reservations that you know that's his formation. He seems like he's going to be stubborn enough, and it, it's common criticism of other managers that don't end up working out how stubborn they stick to their tactics. Um, how's that formation going to break down? With the likes of, like you mentioned, Harry Arthur or Jason Malumbi in that midfield, um, and set it up for us that four three three. Yeah, well, I think I think McCarthy is going to be key to this. I think McCarthy is going to be his holder, and then because with the twenty ones, you look at he had Malumbi and Connor Coventry, and Connor Coventry just kind of sat and kind of was like the metronome there. He knocked the ball to Malumbi, knocked the ball to the attacking players. I think he'll do similar to that. So I think McCarthy will essentially be his Coventry, and he'll have Malumbi if Malumbi does get his game now. Provided that we, it could be Malumbi or Arthur, one or the other. I think they're kind of going to going to have that marauding role so they'll kind of be all over the pitch and you'll have them McCarthy to kind of cover um, I will be interested to see what he does with that third midfielder I'm not sure if he's going to go for a kind of not a rigid three but I'm not sure if he's going to push that third midfielder up to be more of a 10 I'll be really interested to see that because I know Kenny liked playing a 10 and he had Conor Ronan in there for the 21s a few times it was effective so part of me is kind of I was kind of thinking about this this morning and he mentioned about Troy Parrott coming in, he's only in because David McGoldrick is injured and he kind of sees him as a like-for-like. Like. And that kind of had me thinking, is he, has he got plans to maybe play Parrot kind of off a number nine in that kind of number 10 role? I'm, I'll be interested to see what he does there, I think. But I do think that, that two is kind of pretty much set. I'll just be interested to see what he does with the third midfielder. Yeah, exactly. And if you look through those midfielders, the one thing we are missing is probably that out-and-out out number 10, that playmaker yeah. role, that kind of round of play for the 21s and... Mm. Even if you look at it there, Jeff Hendricks, or Jeff Hendricks probably won't play there. Alan Brown's probably more of a box to box. Connor Hoonahan's probably a little bit slow to play. In yeah. That role. So you could easily see someone like Troy Parra, uh, David McGoldrick for the Finland game, just come in, sit deeper, and link the play up. Which in a home game in the Aviva, which probably will suit McGoldrick, or, or if he plays Parrot there a bit more than away in Sofia. Definitely, yeah. I think that's what he will do because that's why it kind of surprised me. Like the Abu Femi. Me a lot. I won't go. I'm not gonna lie. But Jack Burns, I'm missing, kind of surprised me a little bit more because, like, the fact that Kenny does like a 10 so much and Burn, I mean, off the top of my head, Burn is probably the only one who can kind of do that necessarily as a midfielder. But I kind of hadn't really been thinking, oh, wait, maybe he'll actually deploy, say, a Goldrick or a Paris to do it. Because I know Parrot played off Ida a few times with the 21s and it seemed like it was a really effective partnership. So maybe he sees Parrot in that kind of in that 10 mole as opposed to someone up top as a focal point, maybe for the attack. The LB Femi one is a very interesting omission. Yeah. He's done very well in the Premier League when he's come on. I know Raf Hussel, uh, Raf Hasselhutl, um treats him with enormous respect. He, he, he's one of his go to forwards alongside Danny Ings. So to see Adam Ida get the shout ahead of Oba Femi, it's an interesting one because Oba Femi hasn't played a lot for the 21s under Kenny. And maybe there's that little bit of loyalty towards Adam Ida. I think that's, you think you touched on that there, you know, uh, hit the nail on the head with that. I think it's a simple fact. I think it, it, he kind of trusts Ida, he trusts Parrot a little bit more just for the simple fact that he's worked with them more, I think. And I'll, I'll have a family's kind of running 21s, like, uh, we all know he's kind of suffered with, with bad injuries, niggly injuries. So kind of, I'll have was kind of in and out. I think he, he only played a couple, he's only won, I think, a couple of caps under Kenny. So I think it's probably just a simple fact of if it was a choice, say, between like an Ida. And then Femi, he, I think Kenny might have looked at it and thought, okay, I know what this lad's going to bring. I've seen him. He's won, what, 10, 11 caps maybe for me. I know what he's going to do. Whereas, yeah, and he, I know he fits in the system, which is crucial. You kind of mentioned it, Daniel, about the system. But Ida fits that. He's the perfect number nine for Stephen Kenny. Whereby, if you look at Femi, he Kenny mentioned reservations a little bit there because Femi plays in the two, beside like an Ings or Long or Che Adams. But along that front three, you're kind of thinking, where does he fit? Like, He's, he has the pace to play the wing, but does he have the discipline to play the position under Stephen Kenny? Because Kenny likes those kind of dynamic wingers, but once that get back, Elvis example is Stephen Kenny winger. He loves Elvis Eddie because he gets up and down the flank. He's up and down all the time. And he links up really well with his fullback. Does Abafemi have necessarily the discipline to do that? I don't, th- I don't think Kenny thinks that. I don't think Kenny thinks he can play in the nine. So I think Kenny looked and thought, where can I slot him in? I can't put him in here anywhere. So maybe drop him down to 21s and get him to learn that role under Crawford. But it is an unusual one, definitely when you consider the, the, his Premier League experience. Like if you, you match that up to Parrot or Ida, it's 
night and day. So yeah, I think he, I think Hopovemi does. Still, I think he, he probably has a reason to be aggrieved. Yeah. Um, just on the last thing on the Hopovemi situation, he obviously tweeted. Um, I think disgrace initially. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. I, yeah, I, I saw that. I couldn't, I couldn't get. I, I don't know if. Yeah, people have been reporting that that happened. I didn't see that myself. I saw the interesting one, all right, but... Yeah, no, no, yeah. it was reporting RT, so... I'm, oh, yeah, so then, yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah, but one thing I want to ask you that, I did find it odd here in Stephen Kenny that he hadn't... He said he hadn't spoken to Abba Femi since yeah. he took over the Ireland manager. Now, I'm aware he sp- spoke with anyone who was part of the current squad and past squad. Is it Stephen Kenny's remit not to talk to everyone that, that has some sort of chance of get, making the Ireland Yeah, that, yeah I, that, that, was, that was the kind of... Yeah, that... that confused me I suppose a little bit when I saw it I thought it, it probably would have been better like especially with a younger player like that that would like Alba Femi I think it probably would have been better to just give him a buzz and say listen I think you're better suited to the 21s I think you can learn your trade there I think you don't fit into my front three at the moment but you can get there kind of thing a little bit like that maybe so yeah I think was it a mistake I don't want to call it a mistake from Kenny like he's only started in the job do you know what I mean but I think yeah he probably should have given him a show and just just kind of maybe even a brief five minute run through of why maybe he doesn't necessarily fit, but he will fit into the future. The, the only thing is, I do hope that that there is plans for him in the future. I hope it doesn't. This doesn't kind of this doesn't cause him to like step away or like even because I know the twenty ones are announcing their squad next or could even be tomorrow. I think actually, um, so I expect him to be in there. Now the only thing is, I hope he doesn't do anything like I hope he doesn't uh, reject the call up right like that. I hope he is kind of. Do you know what I mean? I hope is this only this is only something small, so a little blip, and they can kind of continue working together because he could be a big player for us in the future. Well, exactly, and he has that one competitive international cap as well. Just to go back onto the wingers' point, you yeah. know, when you saw the twenty ones with El uh, El and you had Aaron Connolly on the wings, would you expect Aaron Connolly to start maybe off the right and someone like a James McLean or a Callum O'Dowd, who's a bit more of a yeah. natural out and out winger like a Dara Horgan in the Kenny Dundalk days? Yeah, definitely. I expect Aaron Connolly to start. I think the front three is actually, for me, the front three is going to be most interesting um, of all the positions to see how what he goes with that. I think he will start Aaron Connolly. I think he, he, I think he played him on the wing in Toulon that time last year. And I think he really, because he, uh, he played fantastically, but I think he really impressed Kenny. I think Kenny kind of saw him there and thought, yeah, that's, that's where I like him there. Um, so I think he'll be at the right. On the left, yeah, I think, to be fair, I think McLean does have a very good show to be a starter. Like He had a great season with Stoke. I think he's the kind of player as well that Kenny can get can definitely get a tune out of I think because like McLean and Shelley's defended him in the in the media against comments I can't remember who actually made the comments initially but he defended yeah, him Gary Breen was one of the yeah it was Gary yeah Gary Breen and he defended him there so clearly like there's there's a lot of loyalty between those two so yeah Kenny could get a tune out of him Callum Robinson I think would be an interesting one on the left wing as well um, he played there for West Brom I think he, he was he was I know because when he was with Sheffield United he was kind of either a second striker he was kind of at the right didn't really fit um, but at West Brom he was excellent at the left got them Help them to promotion the region option, but I think that is quite an open, an open position. Calum Dale is an interesting one, actually. He was one of the the names that I saw on the t- on the in the squad and thought that's an interesting one. Um, I think he, <clears throat> again, I think he's the kind of player that Kenny looks at and think I can get something out of him. Definitely, definitely, because Odell, like, I, I think when Odell kind of first burst on the scene, everyone was kind of like, oh, this 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 guy could be he could be a serious player. And I still do think he because he's only young. I think he's only like 24 or 25, so I think he still has the potential to to kick on. He just kind of has been stagnant a little bit in terms of his club career and that's obviously kind of ran into his international career. But I do think Godeo is an interesting one. I think he, he's the kind of player that I'm interested to see how he fits under Kenny and what Kenny, Kenny sees him because it, it doesn't look like he sees him as a 10, which maybe is, I, I would have thought was a Godeo's position, probably sees him as a winger. But um, yeah, there is competition there for that, that left. But I think there's probably competition as well for that right wing as well. I think I think only will play, but I don't think it's probably, I don't think it's necessarily a lock, say, for the first few games. And then moving on to number nine, so David uh, David McCaldrick would probably start yeah. against Finland, but he's not around for the Bulgaria game. Um, could uh, Shane Long be put in there? Or, like it's been interesting with Shane Long and McCarthy. I think there was times where he actually got himself back into the seven yeah. team, and um, would probably bizarrely not picked uh, or made a certain squad. I think Mick said he wasn't gonna make the better, wasn't gonna use him, so he didn't bother put him in a thirty-four man squad, something like that. Yeah. Uh, do you think Shane Long still has a future under Stephen Kenny in, in that number nine role? Definitely. I think Shane Long is probably start the Bulgaria game, to be honest, seeing as McGoldrick is it? Well, I actually, I know I kind of contradict myself a little bit because I, I said that and I still do think that McGoldrick will be seen maybe as a 10. So you could argue that maybe going forward, he sees McGoldrick off Long as his best front two. I'm not sure. But oh, yeah, in terms of Shane Long, I definitely think there's a future there for him. Um, I think if he gets the right wingers beside him and perhaps the right man in a 10, I think he could really, he could 
arguably thrive in that Kenny squad. Um, he'll work all day. He'll run all day. He'll win balls in the air. He'll link lads. I think sometimes when Ireland were playing under McCarthy, the problem was that the midfielder just didn't support enough. And like I know McGoldrick was out, <laughs> McGoldrick was outstanding. Like his his technical play and his whole play is unbelievable. But when you don't necessarily always have someone bursting from the midfield, it's gonna be tough. Like so, I think now when you bring like a Malumbi in there, even a Harry Arter, who in fairness to him, I watched Fulham against. I think it was in the playoffs against was it Cardiff and Arthur scored that cracking goal. I'm not not 100 sure, but he was brilliant. He was up and down. And he was supporting the he was supporting the striker. So I think in terms of Shane Long, I think he, Kenny can definitely see where he fits in that squad. And I think like I do think Long got a bit of a hard time for McCarthy. I know he was injured and that, but like I still think he probably should have been in, when he was fit. He probably should have been involved. He, he was it would have been a good option even for 30 minutes. Like get McGoldrick to run the defenders. Ragged, then get Shane Long, and that's the last thing a defender wants. Thirty minutes run after Shane Long, so like, I still think he probably had a chance there. But going forward, yeah, I definitely think Long is going to be in the plans for Kenny for sure. When Stephen Kenny took over, uh, or when he was set up to be the Ireland manager with the succession plan, there was I'd say he couldn't have believed how well his back five with his yeah. goalkeeper has shaped up. You've got, you know, if he goes with Darty or he goes with Coleman, you've got Duffy and Egan, who are two outstanding Premier League centre halves. You've got Ender Stevens. And you still got Darren Randolph, who, despite maybe not always performing a club career, he's got to move to West Ham now. But at international level, he always seems to deliver for Ireland. But that back five is extremely solid. Yeah, that's said. I think, well, I'm sorry, I'd be wrong because obviously we've got the common Doherty thing. But like, you look at like Egan and Duffy, that's your two. Do you know what I mean? That, that, in fairness, like Richard Kyo, like Richard Kyo done quite well, in fairness, when he did play alongside Duffy for Ireland. Like, you have to give him credit there. But I always thought, like, and I know Kenny said it, that he felt Egan was ready when he moved from. Brentford, I think, to Sheffield. You know, he said he was ready then for a f- kind of to be a full international. I think he has been ready for a while. So that's definitely from the, the back two set. Um, and Stevens, yeah, I think Ender Stevens is he's excellent. I and mean, we all know what he can do, and he's grown into that role for sure. Um, Darren Randolph, yeah, Randolph. To be, to be fair to Randolph, like he, I think he's kind of one of those exceptions where, but he plays so well at international level that even if he's not playing at club level, you're gonna, you know what I mean? You're gonna start him, and it's not like. Like in Mark Travis, I think have, could have a big season because I know Ramsdale is gone and I know um, Arthur Boric is gone. They might get another keeper in there, but they might go with him first choice. So he could have a big season. But it's not like Randolph kind of has someone knocking on the door who's playing 46 games a season, say, in the championship to kind of competition for him. It's like every kind of keeper that we have is in a similar position. So Randolph, definitely, his international experience will, will, will put him to the top there, I think, for sure. I mean, he's deserved, he deserves to, He deserves to be the first choice still. And the last thing, Coleman or Doherty, um, last thing on the defence. So, firstly, who would you pick? And secondly, who will Stephen Kenny pick? I think Kenny will go with Coleman because he's his captain. And I think, I think it would be a brave move to leave a player like Seamus Coleman out of your first couple of international games. Like, you need a player like Seamus Coleman. He's, like the, he's going to be the leader in that locker room. He's going to be the captain. He's going to get the, the lads up. Like, it would be very brave to not start him, I think, especially when it's your first first two games who would I go I'd probably go with Doherty like Doherty's outstanding like he's consistently been for the last two years one of the best right backs um, or right wing backs in the Premier League I just think going forward he's excellent defensively he's he can cover himself enough do you know what I mean um, and I think then when you kind of balance that then with Doherty on the right and Stevens on the left like that's about a top eight top nine Premier League like the fullbacks like so um, I would probably go with Doherty but like I, it, it's I think there's a fine line. Like I think Coleman, in fairness to Coleman, he did have maybe the second half of the season. He got back to himself a little bit more. He kind of started off himself a bit. Um, so it's not like, for me, it's, it's definitely not a cut and dry. Yeah, Doherty should be in 100% Coleman out. Uh, I think it's a tough one. I think Kenny would go Coleman, but I, I would personally maybe probably just edge it with Doherty. And we actually had a good year in terms of promotions and players from West Brom and Fulham and yeah. uh, getting into the Premier League again. And big move in the Premier League was Jeff Hendrick moving from Burnley, where he had three or four very good years there, to, to Newcastle. An interesting move for him and probably a, a positive move at this stage in, of his career. Yeah, definitely. It's not a backwards move anyway, which is always good. Um, yeah, I think I think Hendrick could be good in that Newcastle midfield. Um, I think he, he'll run all day for you. I think I, I am really interested to see him in a different kind of... I, I know it won't be too different in the style, but like with Burnley, it was so rigid like under Dyche. I'm interested to see if he gets a little bit more freedom in the midfield um, under Steve Bruce. I think he'll be good. I was actually disappointed that he didn't go to AC Milan or Roma or one of those teams he was linked with. But, um, yeah, I think it's a positive move as long as he kind of gets games. And I think, like, that midfield, like, that Newcastle midfield is not 
it's not set in stone every week. There's a lot of chopping and changing there. Bruce kind of likes to, to switch it around a little bit. So, yeah, Hendrick definitely could be in there. He could could give himself a start, or give give himself a chance of being a regular starter. Um, I'd be interested to see if kind of Bruce plays him a little bit further forward, if he thinks he's better off a little bit further back, where he kind of decides to um, deploy him in that midfield. But yeah, in, in fairness to him, I think it's it's a smart move. It's a smart move at this stage of career. Really. Yeah, just lastly, he's looking forward to the Bulgaria game at first in Finland. I suppose we played Bulgaria. Um, in the Aviva, and they were they were pretty awful. Uh, yeah, there's some 38 year old Davies and possibly the keeper uh, or somebody. Yeah, they yeah. Yeah, they weren't good. They weren't good at all. Um, no. what, sh- what should we be hoping for? I understand some of Stephen Kenny's first and second game, but uh, performance is obviously the most important. Well, sorry, results are results are obviously yeah. the important thing, but performance is probably equally as important, especially early on in the Nations League. What what, what are you looking forward to, and what are your expectations for the for the team over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, well, my expectations are high. I think, like, with Kenny, it's one of those where, boy, it's, he's in a difficult position because if, if we go out they play Bulgaria and, say, we play them off the park but lose or but draw or, say, you know what I mean, maybe you just scrape a win, you've got kind of people in the background going, well, maybe McCarthy was better style where, boy, we, you know what I mean, we got results and stuff like that. I don't know I think, like, Bulgaria were probably, and I saw, I saw them play Gibraltar, what, twice? I think Bulgaria were easily the worst team I saw Ireland play last year or in the last couple of years. They were atrocious i think they were so bad so like we should be we should really be beating them quite handily enough um finland are actually not bad finland are quite a decent side they qualified for the euros i know so that 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 will probably be a tricky one i think it's good that bulgaria's first because like that's obviously the easier game and kenny might get it if we beat them say two or three nil kenny might get it. you know what i mean it'll, it'll kind of it'll lift kenny it'll lift all the players ahead of that finland game and um, i would be optimistic about six points i think you kind of have to look towards the six points i think performance yeah performance is going to be key like it, it, Kenny's kind of under a little bit of pressure whereby nearly it has to look good. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, this is the new era of Irish football and this is, people are seeing Kenny come in as like maybe some kind of a saviour. And if if it's, if it's like, if the, the football isn't fluid or if maybe the lads haven't got quite used to it and it's a bit disjointed, you might start hearing little chirps in the background. But no, in terms of performance, I think, I think it will be good. I think Kenny, like, we saw what he did with the twenty ones. I assume like that first game against Luxembourg. Okay, it was Luxembourg, but still, like the way those twenty ones played, like this, like, like, like I'd seen the twenty ones play someone under. Um, I can't even remember the old manager's name, but it was it was I think uh, no about King. six or seven months before that. No King, that's it. Yeah, six no, or seven months before that. No yeah, <laughs> and uh, they just looked like I was. I remember watching the game and I was thinking this. Like, what, what chance do we? Have? Do you know what I mean? Like the players are not bad. Like Roland Curtis was playing. Was good. Josh Cullen was there. I was thinking, like, what chance do we? Have? Do you know what I mean? What, this is okay. Like it's it's not. It doesn't look like they kind of now it's gone on. And then Kenny came in and straight away it clicked. So that's that will give me hope definitely that it'll it'll click early for him. But I think six points is probably the minimum. But I don't kind of want to. I don't want to underestimate Finland though as well because they're they're quite decent. But Bulgaria should be should beat them easily enough. And I think these players, the, especially the ones Kenny's picked, are ready for a new age of of Irish football. Oh they're, yeah, they're ready to get behind Stephen Kenny. But it's also gonna be interesting in the role of. TV pundits in Ireland because there's no fans at game. Everyone, everyone's going to be yeah. hanging on there everywhere. So interesting to see who RT go on with. Virgin Media will have highlights. So again, it'll be interesting to see. And we just, everyone hopes that, look, the Nations League, well, it is important, but it's not, it's not what Kenny's. Yeah. Is, is, the Slovakia game is obviously the most important. Yeah. It's not what Kenny's yeah, been brought yeah. in for. And if we can give, give Kenny time, he'll get a ride eventually. He's, he has a track record, even Definitely. though. Gary Breen and Jason McIntyre might yeah, agree. Well, the Jason McIntyre thing was uh, just nonsense. The McIntyre thing was outrageous. Just the way he goes, I'm going to be controversial. Or it's the phrase is very similar to that. Uh, and then he was outrageous. Or this is going to make headlines. It's like, yeah, obviously he's going to make headlines, and it's just I know. Not, not what we it, it was it, it was just bizarre because I don't like I don't understand what Jason McIntyre thinks the Irish dressing room is. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like it, everyone knows Stephen Kenny. Like everyone in that Irish dressing room, like pe- you know what I mean. People have televisions like in Google. Like it's. Like it's not like Stephen Kenny is like it's not like he's the new Dundalk manager like coming in from whatever AC Milan summer camps or something like that. You know what I mean? It's that's like Stephen Kenny. Like to, that's yeah, oh, that that's fantastic. That's one of my favorite things that's happened in a while. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm 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 hugely invested in that whole thing. So, but yeah, that's for another day. But no, no, like it. The, yeah, the, I think I think you're right there, Sean. In just in terms of giving Kenny time, like you kind of look at the blueprint of. I always kind of I've kind of gone into this, this routine of nearly comparing Ireland to like Northern Ireland in a way whereby like Michael O'Neill came in and when Michael O'Neill came in it didn't start well at all for them but like they stuck with him and got the they got the results they got to Euro 2016 they were, they were excellent so like I kind of you know, I don't think it will be as bad to start I don't think Kenny will 
you know what I mean? I think Kenny will win his first few games. I think it'll be promising. But I do think time is is huge. Like, I, we, we can't kind of turn on Kenny at the first sign of any kind of weakness or at the first sign of defeat or a, a disappointing performance. I think it has to be has to be given time. Absolutely. And as Roy Keane said about McIntyre, some people are still living off a goal they scored. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Jason, yeah. Ah, there'll be better pundits than him around. <laughs> anyway, Oshin, thanks very much for joining us. We'll, we might get you no worries, on, uh, after the game to the to discuss how they went, but thanks for joining us on Tactical Sports. Definitely. Thanks, thanks for having me, lads. Cheers. Thanks, lads. Appreciate it.